All right, welcome to Energizing EAM. My name is Scott McKenzie. Thank you very much for joining on this great podcast with great people. Talking about the future, talking about technology, and we are broadcasting from Inforum 2019 here in the wonderful town of New Orleans. If you go away hungry in New Orleans, well, you're not trying hard enough. And I, uh, I think, uh, James, they have drink here too, so I think. In One or two. One or two, a couple, just a couple. It's only New Orleans. All right, we're going to have a great conversation with a gentleman by the name of James Toomey. He is the vice president at Infor, and I'm going to go down the road. He's going to explain sort of the the whole hook and loop digital component associated with that. But anyway, stay tuned because we're going to have a great conversation about what he's doing at Infor. Yeah, there you go. That wore me out there, James. Keeping it sexy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Darn right I am, man. All right, James, for the listeners out there, give us a little background on who you are, what you're incredible professional about, and all that fun stuff. And by the way, we're not on video because because we have Wi-Fi challenges here. There we don't go. have Wi-Fi. All the demo guys don't have Wi-Fi challenges. I know, you you're came, you came you're here just not in the in crowd. I, you, you know what I'm going to do after this interview. <laughs> He's like, okay, get out of my video, James. i got to go talk about the demo fee people. So anyway, background. All right, so uh, I lead a, a group, a digital consulting group at, at Infor. So what we've purposely done is staff that with very uh, specific people who are not from enterprise level software. There's enough enterprise level software, ERP, that we talked about earlier, EAM. We've got enough engineering consultants. So what I've done is built a team of from people who have never worked in enterprise software. I myself, I started in advertising. I did a lot of digital transformation with innovation. I spent some time at Novartis, the big pharmaceutical company, and uh, consulting where you can really bring technology, brand, equaling business value together. So uh, with everyone else is looking at the technology, I'm looking at what is the business strategy, and how can this technology move your brand vision, your business innovation. Okay. So, so as I, I look at what you're saying, so let's say I'm, I'm Acme Company, I've got an enterprise system. I'm looking at. Uh, I'm, I'm working with N4 EAM. I've got that embedded. I've invested a lot of time, energy, effort, and money to make that the best system I possibly can. Now you come in, and what do you tell me? I come in and say you, the reason you bought EAM is because you wanted to optimize your systems, your processes. Absolutely, it that's should what be I optimized. Wanted. You should have everything, the data you want. So that's all about optimization. But you know what? In 2020, which is 99 days away, you need to think about transformation. You're looking at competitive advantage. You're looking at you want to be the best employer. You're looking at what new uh, business models. What can you do that nobody else has done with EAM? You're doing what everyone else is doing with EAM, and it's the best product on the planet, very general. Interesting. But that's not growing your brand. It's making you more optimized, more efficient, more effective. I want to grow your unique culture, your unique value proposition to the okay. market that only you do. See, that's an interesting challenge because you're – that, you know, me being in the industrial space, and that's what I do, we don't like one change. Our culture is our culture. And yes, we want to be as efficient as we possibly can with our processes. And that's why we said, okay, we're going with the, but now you're telling me I've got to, I got to, I got to, I got to brand myself. I've got to create an environment that attracts top notch professionals because of all of the stuff. You do if you want to lead, if you want to compete and be as good as anyone else and you want to be about optimization and efficiency. And I'm not playing down the importance of that. No, it's no, no, no. It's insanely important. No. But, you. and you've seen this, is I've got a new, I've got a new customer. I've got a, a CIO. We keep talking about more well, millennials and it's 2020 next month or whatever it is. Millennial millennials are the customer. They are the user. Yeah. And optimization's not enough, man. They want transformation. It is so interesting because that has been a, a big subject for me personally is because recognize these young individuals, these millennials, we'll call them. I don't, I, I, I never, first off, I have a hard time spelling millennial. But secondly, I can never understand the date range. All I know is that they're young people becoming leaders. And millennials then, aren't your kids anymore. They're your boss. <laughs> they, they are. That's the point. And that is... Pull it. Oh, wow. Wow. There's Speaking about EAM. Look at that, man. We are blessed with EAM royalty. <laughs> Kevin Price Kevin in Price, house. ladies and gentlemen. My gosh, Oh, man. my word. He's he's brilliant. I try. You, know, you nailed it this morning on stage, mate. Genuinely nailed it. <laughs> yeah, he is royalty. He, man, honestly, the yeah. best EAM person on the planet. 
That is no <laughs> wow. BS. <laughs> because I had a conversation with him. Uh, he was over in some other part of this whole uh, venue here. And we were talking about, uh, you know, pricing strategies, how to be able to, I mean, he's just, he's constantly thinking about how to, you know, help customers deploy properly these this EAM product, but in a way that is, is sort of thinking outside the box, future thinking, it's all good. So I look at our products not as optimization tools, but as the foundation for it. innovation. He is the genius of foundation of innovation. That's what EAM should be, is the foundation for innovation that creates everything new, and that's what Kevin Price and EAM do be better than anyone in the world. Very genuine, so very it, genuine. So let's, get, let's, uh, let's do a little, uh, sort of an, an example of something like that. So I'll, I'll, I'll be Acme, and I'm a manufacturer of Boom, and I just deployed this particular, and we're, we're doing everything that we could possibly can about optimization. Now what? What, what, are you, what are you telling me that I need to do? Give so, me some suggestions. So first, chances are Acme, we'll assume Acme is a, bit, a little bit more of an old fashioned, so you're probably only looking at where you are in your value chain. That's it. You look. But if you've got an EAM or an M3 or an LN, if you've got the right engine, you need to be looking all the way upstream and downstream your value chain. The supplier is coming in. Who do you want to be that you want your suppliers to be loyal to you? Because when stocks are going to get low, when prices go high, suppliers want to say, no, I want to sell to Acme. So all your incoming, if you're using EAN or you're using LN or M3, why are you going to be the supplier of choice? What visibility can you give them to your data? What guarantee ah. can you give them to you that they are prepared to drive past your competitor to sell to you at the same so price? So you're saying, hey, I'm going to leverage it. You've got this, uh, the, the EAM product in place and I'm going to share with you strategic data to make you a better company. That's why you want to do better because I make you a stronger company because I've got this platform and we're going to work together. You, know. you make it easier for them, yes. you make it better for them. So sometimes even though someone might pay me one penny a ton more, I'm selling to Acme. That's only at the top end of the supply chain. The, uh, the, then the, your core pro uh, productivity version, yep. you've got that. That's what EM that's does. That's what it is, man. It's just like, that's a no-brainer. But then what's coming out of that, you've got customers. More excitingly, you've got your customers' customers, and you've got your customers' customers' customers. What can you feed to them? What can you make? How, how do you make sure that they are, you are loyal to them so they'll stay loyal to you? Loyalty is dead anymore. It's not about loyalty programs or price. It's about services and value. What can you show them? that again, they will want to buy for you and you can charge them $1, $2 more because it's easier and better and they get more value out of what you're uh, producing. Whether that that's value, a toy yeah, or ahead. oil, whatever that is. What value are you giving them beyond the product? Product's not enough. It's got to be service, it's got to be insights and value. How long has that, that, that thinking been going on? Because it, it seems, my background, uh, James, is the fact that that, that that requires a lot of education. That is that is something that if I have a conversation with my suppliers, hey, this is what I want to do, Supplier X, and I want to be able to do something special for you. And we have this system in place, and this system is really good. We've invested a lot of time, energy, and effort, and boom, right here. And we want to be able to, what information do you need from us to be able to make you a better person, a better company? And so you have to have that conversation. 100%. And honestly, candidly, as the workforce is changing, that conversation becoming more easy and easy. People realize, well, everyone says, I'm so unique, it's I'm so true. different, I will never give you my data. Give us your data because we'll give you more value. No one cares about your data except to give you better value. That's what we want to do. So we've got to start opening up the kimono and showing it to See, our customers. See, but that's, not, that's sort of counterculture in, in the <laughs> industry world. It's but it's like, changing. It's like, um, it, it has it's, to, and that's the real, re uh, if you want to create the legacy, a true legacy for your business, for your employees, for your future, you're going to have to do it. It's got, it's, it's all the way through that value chain right there. Six or seven years ago, if you'd have gone to financials or healthcare and said they'll be in the cloud, they'd have said not no a chance. Way. It's here. 2020s is here. This idea, you've got to be in the cloud. You've got to have, your, your data has to be working for you. Your data has to be a value multiplier for your business. At the moment, it's not. It's something that people look at and help them run their business. If you think about that, totally different. How do you use your data as a value multiplier for your uh, proposition, your business, and your revenue? It's a very different way. Now, is there some baseline? I mean, 
that is a case-by-case -case basis. 100%. You, you, you have to go in, you have to have that conversation with the ACME, me, right, and saying, okay, you got data. And we're looking at that data and you're collecting this, collecting this, collecting this. Can you go in and say, we think this has some really significant value to not only your suppliers, but maybe to the customers, customers, customers. And we want to be able to package it in such a way and deliver it in such a way. Do you, do you want to work on that? I went in to, a, to an $8 billion paper and pulp manufacturer a couple of months ago, and they bought M3. We asked them who their suppliers were. They didn't know. We asked them who the customers were. They didn't know. No they way. knew roughly the industry or whatever. But it was so transactional. It is. So what we did for the first time, we brought the business guys and the IT guys together. Yeah. And we said this idea of how do we create value? And everyone looked, you guys don't know what you're doing. This is a commodity business. And it's been around since the Stone since Age. The and said, we've just always done it this way because it is the best. 30 executives. We took, we, 30 executives in a room. What's the big problem? Well, it's about accuracy of delivering. Okay, so if we put a digital platform on this that allows you to tell your customer exactly within two hours of when these huge multi-ton rolls of paper will arrive, would a customer pay an extra $1 a ton? Unanimously, everyone raised their hand. Okay, what else? Well, if they could also easily trace it back, they'd pay a bit more for that. So you've had all these services, all this value on top of this, and all of a sudden you've changed the entire business model of commodity. It's not driven by the market. The market will drive the general principles. You know, it'll but give it, you those, that, that price point. But and that's all it needs to be. Now, yeah. 100%. Uh, so the idea that you people are prepared to pay more. We go in and we tell everyone, this is what we want to do. We want to say, we want to assume that your customer calls your boss next week and says, we're not going to buy from them any, anymore. Why? Because we, we find it cheaper somewhere else. What would your customer have to say? No, no, you don't get it. It's not just about the cost. Yeah, here's if we the don't risk if we don't do that, man. We're going to be we don't get this, this and we this. don't get that, right. we don't get this. It's not about the cost of the product. But that's a completely shift in change, uh, it's thinking. It's total just huge. Market. But we talk about it's happening. This is why the millennials are coming in and they, they're can, open to us. Can you go into an environment that is not using an in for product and have that conversation? It tends to be now. These, these are the conversations we're having with customers who aren't using this. They go in. And the, we, if we can't check our feature functions of your industry, it's a dead conversation. We're not the right product. But we are industry specific, so 90% of the time we've got the better feature function. And that's an IT person saying, yes, you can make us more efficient. But when, then when we go in and say, okay, we're not going to talk about IT, we're not going to talk about the processes, we're going to talk about the value. So we're the guys that then bring in the business partners. And IT, uh, IT groups love this. We've got IT people who have been wanting to speak to the business for years. But then the business people have said, no, you, you go and keep the infrastructure going. It's no longer a case. IT is the business differentiator. It's the part of the value proposition that we build services around the product we sell. And that's all through technology. And, and, and I, love the, I, I love what you're saying. I mean, it's, it is truly brilliant. But it's not, it's, it's not a negative but. No, it's it. just It's a truly a blue ocean opportunity uh, it because... Is. You, you, you've got to educate, you've got, and in fact, you could say, why don't we just do this? Just this, we could do this, which is a, a whole bunch, or we could just, let's, let's just try this and just prove it. A hundred, a hundred percent. And that is still, I mean, that is still a core part of the business, that IT people want to modernize their back end, but that's it, I just need to uh, do it. And candidly, I have to tell our sales reps all the time, guys, you don't want me in, this, this company's not ready for that. Now, once they have modernized or there's a new CIO in, or then they've realized, okay, now I'm running more efficiently. I've got a bunch of people I don't know what to do with. I've got all this better data. Then that's the right time. It is, digital transformation is like the cloud. It is inevitable. Some people are, some people are gonna go there sooner than later, and if they're not ready, they're not ready. But here's the funny thing about that digital transformation. I always have this conversation is like, you need to be engaged now because the speed at which this is happening if you decide that you want to get involved a year later, or two years later, and you say, okay, uncle, uncle, I'm, I'm all engaged now, you have lost a tremendous amount of insight, knowledge, and, and you're, you're behind the eight ball. We, uh, it's like, come on, just do it. Just, just 
get it. There was a quote on stage I saw the other day around what Walmart did. Walmart, the, you know, the biggest store and the biggest uh, employer on the planet. They say we just should have started it five years ago. Yeah. But that's true now of every industry. It's not about retail or transportation. No. I roll my eyes when people say, you know, I want to be the next Uber. And it's not, it's not that complicated. It's not that dramatic. Just start adding value above the product. You can't think. When we do, we do these intense two-day workshops, one two-day, and the goal is that you can't make a single penny from your product. You've only got to make it from the value. Who can argue that we should be in the value uh, proposition of value versus product? But here's the, here's, the, here's the no risk component. So let's say you go in there, I got the value of the product right there. It's, it's 25 cents. Yep. And if I can't, through this workshop, and I'm not, t I'm not playing around with that, create a little bit more value through you know, data, whatever it might be, you win. It's, it's a no-brainer. You, you win. It's an absolute no-brainer. Yeah. If you're only thinking about the functionality and the efficiency of these products, you're paying, everyone's paying too much for these products. They need to be more than efficient, more than optimization. It's also about transformation. And sometimes that's a very small transformation. It might be workforce scheduling. You might find that you're not keeping a young, you've got this amazing AEM product, it's making everything efficiency, but you've got this younger word generation that they don't want to work nine to five. So we just have to give them flexible schedule. It's not, that is not groundbreaking, but it's something different that you do. And what does that mean? So we, we get to know who are your employees, what's yes. important to them, and that's it. And then be able to create that. that and, and what you're doing is you're creating a, 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 a new culture, one that's a little bit more adaptable to my preferences. and 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 which, you know, from a psychological point of view, I'm maybe more engaged, I'm happier with my, you know, whatever it is, and I'm more productive in a sense. I'm spending two days with maybe the most prestigious health hospital system on the planet in three weeks. And it's all about how do we think about uh, a, a flex flexibility of scheduling for our physicians. What you're trying to do is remove some friction. You're just trying to s just remove any resistance just 100 percent. that's it and it gets all there doable we've just got to do it we just can't keep thinking uh, we can't keep doing the old things and expecting different results and see and i think that that's a br uh, another brilliant point today going into the future you have to you can't just continue to do the same thing and and expecting a different result it's not that world anymore and, it, and, you, and you've got the technology solutions that are out here to enable you to be nimble, to, to remove friction, to do the things that, there's Max right there, to do the things that are, um, that, that, that really position you for 2020, 2021, 2020, and then so on and so forth. Everyone forward. thinks, everyone says, well, one want to Amazon, want to be as frictionless as Amazon. We don't, because you're not Amazon. No. The only way Amazon can survive is its size and friction. You actually want the right friction at the right time. You want a signature experience. You want your customers to say they make amazing products or services. But I, you know what I really love about them? Dot, dot, dot. You don't say that about Amazon because it doesn't have to be. Amazon's not got a brand. It's got an amazing efficiency uh, value proposition. You, nobody can compete with Amazon. Nobody. So once you've made all the barriers, remove all the barriers, remove all the bad friction, What's that good friction point that you yeah. want customers to stop and engage and remember and you say, you know why I love Acme? Because of that. Say, well, don't they produce the same as everybody else? Yeah, but I love Acme because of that. Let's see. I can have this conversation all the time. Fun stuff, and I got the best yeah, no, job. Get, where are you going? No, I've, I've got it 11 o'clock. Well, I know, but you just can't run off. All We're right. professionals here. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, James. It, it was really wonderful, and I appreciate you, your time. And I know the listeners of Energizing EAM agree with you 100%. I know I do. You've, you've got a fan on this side. Oh, I love it. Look, this is a high. The 2020s are 99 days away, and it's a high-energy decade. Everything changes. There you go, man. Hey, don't, don't. Yeah, don't take my mic, by the way. It's just like, all right, you energizing EAM listeners, thank you very much for joining us. That was a great conversation. I'm a big fan of James. Bottom line, man. He is looking at the future. He's looking at how you can leverage technology and, and what to do and to gain that. And, and, and not only that, the values that he can bring to, or Infor can bring to not only the front end but the back end and throughout the whole value chain. Man, I'm telling you right now, that is an incredible conversation. Thank you very much, James. And thank you once again, once again, once again. Joining the uh, energizing 
EAM. We're going to be coming back with some more and great interviews, so stay tuned. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. All right, let's recap. That was James Toomey. That's T-O-O-M-E-Y, T-O-O-M-E-Y. You can look at his stat card out there on LinkedIn. Just look for James Toomey, and you will find him. He's got a big old long title, Vice President, Head of Digital Transformation. He's got it all, man. I'm telling you right now, he's got some mad skills. you got to reach out to him because he knows exactly what he's talking about. You will not be disappointed. As well as go out to this interview will be at industrialtalk.com forward slash in for eam Again, industrialtalk.com forward slash in for eam You'll find his interview as long and with all the other incredible EAM professionals out there that are part of M4 and the partnerships that they bring on into the family. Incredible, incredible. As well as download those seven reports, seven reports that you need as an EAM professional, as a company looking to deploy EAM. Those are the reports that you need. As well as one month free access to Industrial Talk or the Industrial Academy. It's all out there. You just need to go to industrialtalk.com forward slash in for EAM. Get everything. I've removed all of the friction. Just get it. It's easy peasy. We're going to have another incredible interview coming from the, you know, Inforum 2019 of wonderful professionals that are just focused on your success. So thank you very much. And you know that this platform is dedicated to your success. So be safe, be bold, dare greatly, change the world. That's what we're all about here at Energizing EAM. Thank you very much for joining, and we'll be right back with another great interview. So stay tuned.